wow um hello hi welcome to my channel i'm stephanie this is the week 39 weekly wrap up for september the 22nd through the 28th um and contemporary thon wrap up yeah As I said, week 39, contemporary -thon wrap up. I will do that in the middle between giving you what I read last week as well as uh, before I do what I'm currently reading. Y'all are getting this. This is what's happening today because I rolled out of bed. Normally I get up and I'll take a shower and then, you know, fluff my hair, whatever, so that it looks sort of acceptable. No, not today. Not today, and not in Tuesday's video either, because I'm going to record that one as soon as I'm done with this one. But, um, yeah, uh, it was a slumpy week for me, and you're probably going to laugh because uh, I still read eight books last week, uh, but that was a slumpy week for me since, so uh, what, about four weeks ago when I started doing double digits every single week, so, yeah. And it's all because I finished watching... The Vampire Diaries. All because of that. Um, I got completely <clears throat> wrapped up in season eight and, uh, well, after like season six and then season seven and season eight, I was just like all about it. Uh, I have watched all of the spinoffs, so now I have watched The Vampire Diaries, the originals, and Legacies, which I am so excited that they're bringing Legacies back because that ending was like, what the hell? Like, literally, what the hell. Um, and I can't wait to start watching that again. Uh, and I would have to say, some people are going to ask which one was my favorite. I'd have to say Legacies was, because just after one season of Legacies, without seeing all of the pre- stuff that goes along with it. I was completely hooked by that show. Um, whereas both Vampire Diaries and the originals took me a couple seasons before I was even invested in the character. So yeah, um, you're not here to listen about my TV shows. Well, no, you are, uh, because you guys want to know about me. And also the fall season has started again, which means Grey's Anatomy's back and um, How to Get Away with Murder is back for its last season. Yes. So happy about all that. And then all the other amazing shows that I, like, make time for. So my numbers will probably go back down to just, you know, eh, numbers like this. Because, I mean, seriously, I, I take my television watching very, very seriously. I have an entire schedule uh, for my DVR and all my shows are back. Empire. The Voice, um, what else is back? There's just a whole bunch of shows that The Good Doctor, New Amst Amsterdam, um, mainly Grey's Anatomy. So yeah, so let's get into what I did read last week and whew, get this on the road so it's not super long because eight books I should be able to get through really quickly. We'll see. The first book that I finished last week was Work For It by Talia Hibbert. I'm placing this in LGBT uh, genre, and I give this book five stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an arc, and for contemporary thon, it hit all of the challenges uh, pretty much. It's going to be released in 2019. It has yellow on the cover. It's hard hitting. It is diverse. It has plants on the cover, and it's is by a black author. Oh my goodness. So in this story, we have Ule and Griff. Both of them have sort of difficulties within their lives. Griff lives in a small town. Ule had some things that happened to him, which made him sort of retreat to this small town to go pick elderberries. Um, and both of them are sort of dealing with those difficulties together. There is content warning for depression, anxiety, suicide, and that's about it, I think. But the, seeing the two of them work together, it it took me a little bit to get into the story uh, because it's not something that I can relate to. I'm not gay. I'm not male. And, you know, I wasn't connecting completely with them until the story started to sort of come together with their interactions and finding out what their issues were, what their pasts were all about, and how they worked together. And it ended up 
rocking my world on Monday or Sunday, Sunday, Monday, time frame, Monday. Um, and that, this one also put me sort of in a slumpity sort of way, because I was just like, ooh, that, that story was really emotional and really hard hitting. That's the other, I don't know if I said that, but, uh, that's one of the, it was like, that's very different and something I kind of needed right then. So the next book that I finished was Hollywood Dirt by Alessandra Tori. I place this in contemporary. I give this book three stars. I give it two steam fans. I listened to it in, on audiobook. I read it for romance genre thons for small towns and also for contemporary thon for yellow on the cover. Um, and this book, oh, this book, this audiobook, I mean, I don't know that I could have sat down and read this book like in ebook form because for one, there's a whole bunch of voice change. You are in between our characters, Cole and Summer, like every other chapter, sometimes within the chapter, there's nonsensical sort of sayings that are all peppered throughout the story. The damn audiobook is 116 chapters long. Now, your head's probably like popping off like mine popped off when I looked at that and was like 116 chapters in an audiobook. What the hell is going on? But if you look at it, they're only some of them are one to two minutes long. And it's just like, what? Why? I don't understand. And then the audiobook only has one narrator, and it was just like, oh, with something so large like that, something that switches over so quickly, there should have been two audiobook uh, narrators to differentiate, you know, who's speaking in what points, and there was no, like, clear distinction of that. So this story is about a movie star who catches his wife cheating on him, wife cheating on him and he's just about to start making this sort of small town movie he ends up moving to the small town to start the movie and stuff like that still not divorced still married and then ends up hooking up with summer who's the small town supposed pariah because she caught her fiance cheating on her and then she did some things that were uh, you know, look down upon, uh, because this is a sweet southern town, and you just don't cross the people of this southern, Ooh, and all of it is, the, the majority of the book is about how they're setting up the movie. I was like, I'm bored with this, can we get to filming the movie, what happens after they didn't film the movie, and why you still, why are you sleeping with her, and not divorced yet. Why didn't you divorce that wife in the first place? I mean, I was just like, oh, oh, sweet Lord, sweet Lord. And it just didn't seem to go anywhere. It was almost like a waste of my, I think it was like 10 hours or something like that, something crazy. I was just like, oh, it was so painful. I think this took me like two days to read or listen to, and it just wasn't fun. I should have DNF'd it, but I didn't because I was like, I'm gonna push through this. I like Andres uh, Alessandra Tori's writing, and this is one of her other er, her earlier books, and I kind of want to watch the uh, Passion Flicks movie for it, and um, yeah, I probably should have just stuck with watching the movie. I haven't watched it yet, but at this point, whew, yeah. The next book that I finished was Hell and Back by Natasha Madison, and I'm placing this in Dark Romance. I give this book 4.25 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I listened to it as an audiobook. I initially uh, wanted to listen to this for Contemporary Thon for Hard Hitting, and oh, was it hard hitting. Wow. I don't read synopsis. You guys know I go in my books blind, and this one just like punches you in the gut. There's content warning for abuse, for drugs, for crimes of special victims, uh, like at a special victims unit type setting, and wowzer. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I was just like, what? I have been sitting on this. This is also a, a Polycon 20 in 20 uh, author that will be at a Polycon next year, and I wanted to make sure that I read something from her. 
And this book follows Bella, who is a now single mom. She has finally gotten out of an abusive relationship. And her and her daughter have been really sort of traumatized by this. Not not sort of. They have been traumatized by this. So they are very skittish about, you know, who they have contact with and everything like that. Well, the neighbor across the street is Jackson, who was a special victim's police officer, detective, and he has a case about some missing girls that's going on. Well, he, this is a sort of insta-lovey, um, relationship that was the reason why I didn't give it you know more stars is because it felt a little insta lovey and it didn't really necessarily cover how she got through the abuse it did seem like um it was just sort of washed over the abuse was very much part of the story but the way she recovered was really quick and it was just a little off-putting but for the most part I really enjoyed the story I, I enjoyed the mystery of it and the thriller thrill-ish suspense part of the story as well but it's very hard-hitting as well the next book that I finished was Handle with Care, Veteran Movers number three by Mary Hart. Uh, I place this in contemporary. I give it 2.5 stars. I give it one Steam fan. I read this as an arc from NetGalley. And for Contemporary Athon, I'm reading this because it's a release of 2019. Whew, this book, this book, this book. Oh my goodness. So I read book number two in this series and was like, what? Um, I guess I need to read book number one so that I have all the characters, you know, throughout. Well, this one follows more characters from that, from the series and along with everyone else. There was no real focus on Evan and Kenzie. Um, it was just real cheesy. It didn't do it. There was a whole bunch of repeats of information and, um, yeah, I just... Mm. So the next book that I finished was How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. I'm placing this in women's fiction. So let me explain a little bit why I placed it in women's fiction before I get into the depths of uh, this story because it's amazing, by the way. So when I label something women's fiction, um, it's not that I am trying to downplay it or trying to, you know, belittle it, saying that only women should read it. No, I'm saying that this is a, a story about a woman and it doesn't necessarily revolve around the relationship. There is a relationship in it, but um, it doesn't revolve around that relationship. There is so much more to the story. Uh, it's about a woman's journey. So that's where my head is when I label things women's fiction. Um, let's get to the star ratings for this one. I give it five humongous stars. I was completely hooked from the start of this. Uh, I give it one Steam fan. I listen to it as an audiobook. And for contemporary thon, it fits the categories of hard hitting, uh, plants on the front, on the cover, and it's illustrated. And in this story, we have Margaret, who is excited about her relationship to Chip, and he turns out to be a douche. I kind of felt he was a douche all along, just through the first, you know, our meeting of him and how they interacted. I was like, he's not going to be good. He's not going to be good for her. He forces, she has a fear of flying. He forces her to fly in this teeny tiny little airplane. I knew things were going to go bad after that. So they end up getting into a plane crash. And that is where our story sort of starts to take its journey into Maggie's recovery and how she deals with it, how she grieves, how he sort of is a douchebag and we're just starting to talk about him anymore. And you have Ian, who is the, uh, physical therapist that ends up helping her at the hospital uh, to recover and everything like that. I just really enjoyed it. It has family moments in it that is just absolutely amazing. She has a sort of, a, um, you know, a sister that has a secret or that got into a disagreement with their mother and there's things that needed to be revealed and the way that the family comes together, I just really was all about the story. This was a one sitting story for me. I put it on and I did not stop listening to it until it was done. I had tears on my face and I was just 
here for it. I was just completely taken by this story and I loved the journey all around. The next book that I finished was The Bromance A Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I'm placing this in continent in contemporary. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it two steam fans and I read this as an arc and for contemporary a thon it fits the categories of illustrated cover, releases in 2019, yellow on the cover, and plants on the cover. So in this we have a married baseball couple who is Gavin and Thea and the two of them have this falling out in the beginning of the book and you kind of go through the steps of him finding out how to get back to his wife and understand her. They really got together in an insta sort of way. She finds out she's pregnant, they get married, and they've now been together for three years or so, and something happens where they just finally sort of tip and Gavin moves out. Thea's all mad at him because of the way he reacted. So what does Gavin do? He gets, well, Gavin doesn't do it. His boys from the baseball team and other influential people uh, that have come together that have had these marital problems before and have worked out their marriages uh, get together and they read romance novels. And I was so entertained by this book. I was a little leery about how and where this was going to go. I'm glad I finished it because if I had just stopped when I started having issues with it, um, I wouldn't have gotten to the best parts of it. So he ends up taking uh, one of the romances that the guys suggested to him that he reads and sort of applies the things that the characters from the romance does into his own marriage to sort of woo her back to start to understand her and it didn't go down the line that you know the romance book is what is going to fix his marriage he didn't emulate it completely and I was here for that I liked how it ended up falling together and coming uh you know to stand and how it all how it all ended up so that was great as well the next book that I finished was The Football Pants Chronicles by uh, Tessa Bailey. I place this in erotic short story. I give this book four stars. I give it three steam fans. I listen to the podcast of Read Me Romance. And this is J.J. Watt fan fiction that Tessa wrote. <laughs> and our character's name is A.J. and uh, Lizzie. A.J. ends up walking through the tunnel after a football game and Lizzie wants to get uh, some paraphernalia, football paraphernalia uh, autograph for her grandfather and he instantly falls in love with her. I, it was sore, it was sweet, it's sexy and it was just, it's just a good little, little something something to, you know, listen to. It was fun and I was here for it. And the final book that I read last week was Man Candy by Melanie Harlow. I place this in contemporary. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. And for contemporary a thon, this was the book that was, uh, is one of Booktube and Bookish Creators favorites, who is Brie from Brie Hill. I will leave her channel information because she's back down in the description box. I'll also leave her blog information down there. Thank you very much for recommending this book to me because it was so yummy. Jamie and Quinn are friends, sort of. Jamie is the little sister to Quinn's best friend and he, they're both sort of moving back to town. Well, Jamie's always lived in her brother's apartment, but Quinn needed to have somewhere to stay while his house was getting taken care of. And there's some secret crushes that are revealed and some friends with benefits. Um, childhood, like it was, it was good. It was good. It's like 10 years. Um, they had a history when they were in high school and you know now they're older and they can explore the things that they want and I was just here for it. It was a very quick read and it was fun and like I said it was sexy and yes yes I understand why Brie loved this book oh so much. So here is the wrap up for contemporary -a -thon. I'm going to go through, tell you which books met which categories, um, 
it actually ends tonight or whatever, but for all my readathons, I always go from Sunday to, or Sat, nope. I always go, yes, Sunday to Saturday, regardless of the dates that, um, you know, the readathon host put out because I do weekly wrap ups on Sunday. So I technically could continue on and, you know, whatever, but this is my wrap up for it. So for Contemporary Athon, uh, Chelsea, Julie, Natasha, and Melanie uh, hosted. And for the challenge of Read a Release in 2019, I read Handle with Care by Marie Hart. For Read a Contemporary with Yellow on the cover, I'm placing Hollywood Dirt here by Alessandra Tori. For Read a Diverse Contemporary, something outside of my own experience, I am placing work for it there. And that's because it is an LGBTQA uh, novel. And uh, for Read a Contemporary with an Illustrated Cover, I am placing Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams in this category. For Read a Dark or Heart Hitting Contemporary, I am placing Hell and Back by Natasha Matson. For Read a Contemporary with Plants on the Cover, I am placing How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. And for the final challenge of Read a Contemporary that is beloved by another book-ish community member. I am placing Man Candy by Melly Harlow and shouting out Brie Hill. Yay. So what am I currently reading? I am currently reading Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren and Team Player Book 2 or Volume 2. I don't know how we're saying that, uh, but it's an anthology of sports romances by some awesome some authors and I'm excited to continue on with that one uh like I said I'm being real lazy today so you guys will see this outfit again on Tuesday in Tuesday's video because as soon as I finish this one I'm gonna record that one and that video is the recommendations video for uh romance genre -thon. so if you want to participate please check that video out and check out what I'm going to be reading in October. So let me know if you have read any of the books that I have just named off, what your thoughts on them were. Did you participate in Contemporary Athon? And yes, so many yeses. Also, if you guys didn't know, Brie Hill, Brie from Brie Hill, and I will be doing Instagram live stories um, on Fridays. Not every Friday. We haven't gotten a schedule yet, but we did our first one this Friday like a couple days ago and it was pretty much a good hit so make sure you check out our social media uh stuff and make sure that you're following us because we'll sit down we'll talk bookish issues and categories and things like that we may change it to being a youtube live thing we're not exactly sure at this point but we're definitely going to be doing something getting our wine and talking uh bookish issues and topics and things like that uh on Fridays either every other Friday or one Friday a month something like that depends on our schedules but it'll be on Friday so we can drink wine and not have to get up the next day um but yeah as always if you enjoyed the video please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel also there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel thank you for watching and we will see you guys later